exponents. And we're going to try a couple more difficult problems here today. So number six looks very similar to number four that we did earlier, except you'll notice inside the parentheses I see a g to the fourth in the numerator and a g in the denominator. And I also see an h to the sixth in the numerator and an h to the fourth in the denominator. So you have some options here. What I am going to show you though is I'm going to simplify all the stuff that's in these parentheses first, because I like things to be smaller. And then I'm going to square everything with this exponent on the outside. Now you are more than welcome to square everything first, but that's going to make it all bigger and grosser and not as pretty. Um, and then you can simplify things from there. So either way we should end up with the same answer, but I think it's easier to simplify first. So again, let's start with those coefficients. So we're going to divide 12 by 4 and get 3. Then, now let's look at the exponents. This is g to the fourth over g to the, again, there's an imaginary one in there, so g to the first. The rule is when you divide, you subtract your exponents. So that's going to be g to the third, because four minus one gives me three, top minus bottom. Then I'm going to have h to the six minus four, which is two, and then all of that is still going to be squared. And again, if you don't really understand how I got those numbers out of there, those exponents out, you want to go back and look at what we did with problem number three back here in the first video. Okay. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and distribute our exponent through to everything, and that's going to give me three squared. Then I'm going to have g to the third squared. So remember that's g to the three times two. And then I'm going to have h squared squared, so that's h to the 2 times 2. So when I simplify all of that, my answer is going to be 9, then g to the 6th, and h to the 4th. I have all my exponents that are positive, and I only see one of each variable, so that is my final answer. Okay, so I challenge you to try it the other way, distribute your 2 through and then simplify everything, and see if you get the same answer. But if you're happy with this, then that's fine too. Okay, problem number seven doesn't look so bad, but you'll notice on our b variable we have a negative exponent. So we're going to have to use the rule that with negative exponents they get moved. So because this one's technically in the numerator, because we can think of all of this as over one, that means this negative exponent's going to get moved to the denominator and become positive. If the negative exponent was in the denominator, it would get moved to the numerator and again become positive. So my final answer for this one is going to be a squared over b to the third. And that's my final answer because I have an a variable and a b variable. Those are different variables, so I'm done. But I could not leave my answer how I started with this problem because the directions specifically say all exponents must be positive. Okay, fantastic. Problem number eight. I see a negative x or negative coefficient here. That's perfectly fine. We just can't have negative exponents. And technically in the denominator, I have a coefficient of one. So negative three divided by one. Well, that's just going to be negative three. And here I see that I have some m's and I have some n's. So again, if we break those up and look at those separately, I'm going to end up with m to the fifth over m to the fourth. So that's going to give me m to the five minus four. And then I'm going to have n to the two minus eight. Now you notice that eight's bigger than two, so that means this n variable is eventually going to end up in the denominator, but we'll just stick with this for now. That's my equals here. So that's going to give me negative three m to the 1 and n to the negative 6. So now we're back to a problem like problem number 7. We have a negative exponent here, so I'm going to move that piece and that piece only to the denominator. My negative 3 again is a coefficient, so that doesn't get moved. So that'll be negative 3m. We can put that 1 up there if we want to, but we don't have to. And then that's going to be n to the 6th, because once you move that exponent, it becomes positive. And that's my final answer. Okay. Again, if you don't want to go through all these different steps, you could just look to see that the end of the eighth is the bigger one, so that's where my n's going to have to go. But again, I prefer to follow these step by step so you don't get too confused with all these different rules. 
Okay, number nine is very similar to problems that we did before, um, with just problem number eight actually, except this one's got negative exponents. Here's one in the denominator, here's one in the numerator, here's one in the numerator and the denominator, and we have three variables with this one instead of just two. So that's okay, we'll just deal with it the same way we did before. So start with our coefficients, negative 40 over six. Well, six doesn't go into 40 evenly, but we can reduce that down. So negative 40 over 6, let's see, a 2 will go into both of those. So that'll leave us with negative 20 over 3 for a coefficient. If you prefer to write that as a decimal, obviously go ahead, but you know, this is ugly is enough as it is. Now we have to do our top variable minus our bottom variable here with those exponents. So I'm going to have x to the 2 minus, you know I'm going to slide a parenthesis in here and then put a negative 4 because remember that if we have minus a minus, that's going to turn into a positive. Then I'm going to have y to the, again start with the top, negative 3 minus 4, minus 4, and then with my last one I'm going to have z to the minus 5, or negative 5, minus a negative 2. So again, the double negative here is going to become a positive, but we'll deal with that one in just a second. Okay, so that gives me negative 20 thirds, the coefficient gets carried down. I'm going to have x to the, that ends up being a 6, because again, like I talked about before, 2 minus a minus 4 is 2 plus 4, which is 6. I'm going to have y to the negative 3 minus 4 is negative 7. And then I'm going to have z to the negative 5 minus a negative 2, so negative 5 plus 2 gives me a negative 3. Okay, so I've now got my variables written once, but you'll notice that these last two have negative exponents on them. So that means we have to write them in the denominator. Now, since our coefficient was a fraction, I'm going to go ahead and stick the x to the 6 in the numerator with my negative 20, and then I'm going to stick the y to the 7th and the z to the 3rd in my denominator with my 3. If you prefer to leave them separate again, that's fine. That's just a matter of how you want to write them. So negative 20 x to the 6, since that was the positive exponent, and 3 y to the 7th, z to the 3rd, since those were negative exponents, they get kicked to the denominator. And that's our final answer. All right, the last one, ooh, it's the ugliest one yet. So we have negative coefficients as well as some negative exponents as well as a negative exponent on the outside. Ugh. Okay, so where do we want to start with this one? Again, I think it's smart to simplify everything inside the parentheses first. So let's take a look at those coefficients. A negative 30 over a negative 12. Well, 12 doesn't go into 30 very evenly, and you notice a negative, negative, that's going to be a positive. But I do notice that 3 will go into both of them. So if I divide negative 30 by, well, negative 3 technically, um, but that's going to end me up with a 10, and then a 4 in the denominator. Oh, I guess a 6 could have gone into both of them too. That's okay, we can reduce it in the next step. Um, then we're going to have j to the second, j to the negative 5. So that'll be j to the second minus a negative 5. And then we're going to have a k to the negative 2, let's see, minus 4. And all of this junk is still to the negative 3 power. We'll get to that in a second. All right, so let's simplify that coefficient again, since I didn't pick the biggest one to simplify it first. So that'll give me 5 halves. If I do 2 minus a negative 5, that gives me j to the 7th. And then I'm going to have k to the negative 2 minus 4 is a negative 6. And again, all of that is still to the negative 3rd. Okay, so simplifying again what's inside these parentheses first, I'm going to go ahead and put this k to the 6 in the denominator, since it's a negative exponent, and then the j to the 7th in the numerator. And you'll see in a second my method to my madness. So 5j to the 7th over 2k to the 6. All of that is still to the negative third power. Now, because this negative third power goes to everything, it's basically just going to flip-flop this whole fraction on the inside. So everything that's in the numerator goes to the denominator, 
everything that's in the denominator goes to the numerator. So what this is going to do then, I'm just going to flip this whole fraction on the inside, which is why I wanted to write it as one big fraction, to k to the sixth over five j to the fifth, oops, sorry, that should be a seven, my fault. Erase that out of there. j to the seven, then all of that is to the third power. Okay, now we have something that we can do like we did before. So we want to distribute this power to everything. And I'm just going to do this in one last step since I'm running out of room here. So two to the third is eight. K to the six to the third. So power to power we multiply. That'll be K to the 18 divided by five to the third is 125 and j to the seventh to the third, again, power to power you multiply, will give me j to the 21. And finally, we are done with this problem. But this one, really make sure that you understand what's going on with all these different rules. And you may have had a better way to do this than the way I did it, and we may end up with the same answer. At least we should end up with the same answer. Um, but just remember, you know, take it step by step. Whichever way you're going to do it is fine. Um, I think this way is the easiest. Again, simplifying what's inside the parentheses first, um, and then going from there. But if you find a better way, then that's fantastic too. All right, thank you for listening to this about our exponents, and we'll deal with some fractional exponents next.